Uh, but let's uh, talk right now about those Just Stop Oil protests. So we had a whole month of it uh, around London uh, in, in October. And then it started again uh, this week. Uh, we've had uh, protests on the M25, eco-zealot lunatics climbing gantries over the M25, putting drivers at risk and indeed themselves. Uh, we saw yesterday two lorries colliding as they were in a moving roadblock by the police and a police officer on a motorcycle uh, being injured. I mean, frankly, we're all just very lucky that we haven't seen any deaths from some of these protests because of the trouble they're causing and indeed uh, the just the outrage and the frustration for so many law-abiding citizens going about their daily lives, including a man who missed his own father's funeral because of those delays. I mean, hang your heads in shame, Activists. They keep insisting, of course, we have no choice. We have to do this because the world is dying. You always have a choice in a democracy. And stop comparing yourselves to suffragettes. Um, and, you know, Nelson Mandela, uh, you ain't a suffragette or Nelson Mandela. But um, from the paper today reporting, uh, the Home Secretary, Suella Braverman, speaking at a conference yesterday, telling the police uh, basically to stop humouring eco-activists and to take control. She says their reluctance to tackle criminal disruption is now a problem. Uh, and uh, she said that members of the public are taking the law into their own hands because they've lost faith in the police. Well, let's talk about this with Dale Vince, who's founder of Ecotricity. Good morning to you. Yeah, morning, Julia. Yeah, thank you very much indeed for joining us, Dale. Um, uh, Shuela Brevman's right, isn't she? The police need to take a hand on this. I think she's right that members of the public have lost faith in the government actually to deal with the climate crisis and that's what you're seeing in the Just Stop World protest is taken to the streets. Um, but, I mean, the people are taking to the streets, but I mean, they don't have to take the streets. There are plenty of ways of legally protesting. I've been on a legal protest you know, against lockdown, um, but I didn't I didn't go around stopping other people going about their daily business. Why Why do eco-activists justify what, what, what it is? Because we see people are being convicted, people are being arrested um, of criminal activity. Well, you know, um, I think it's, I hoped it was fairly obvious. We are facing a climate crisis. Uh, you know, I, I heard, uh, heard you mention the injury of a policeman uh, collision of a couple of lorries. That's unfortunate, no doubt about it. It's not but unfortunate. Extreme, it's a direct result of what weather. happened. And it's unfortunate. And in the extreme weather that we had uh, in the last uh, in the last year, we've had 40,000 deaths, actual deaths. And you've got to hold that up against this disruption that people are causing. People are at sorry, the Dale, wind Dale, wind people, this Dale, not doing enough. Dale, 40... Yes. Yes. Thousands of people die as a result of cold, far more from the cold than from heat, every single year in, in, in every country, actually, but you know, particularly in this country as well. Um, that's an issue. That's an issue of poverty and, uh, and an issue of obviously very, very elderly people who, frankly, unfortunately, are, are, are you know, on, on, on borrowed time a lot of the time anyway. And I mean, obviously, we do some heat related deaths, but it's cold related deaths, which are the biggest problem in, in this country and around the world, not heat related deaths. When you say it's unfortunate, uh, this police officer could, you know, if he'd hit his head differently, we also we could have seen someone, um, you know, being dying. We could have seen something more than this. These people say they want to raise awareness. They're making a demand. Um, a, we don't need any more awareness. I mean, oh my God, this is on the news twenty four seven. And B, um, who are these people to make a demand? If you want to have some change in what policy, you stand for election. You. You campaign, you win over people with your arguments and you get elected and you, you, you enact change that way. You don't just hold the country to ransom. OK, well, look, first off, the deaths I'm talking about are from the climate crisis. They're not the death every year of people from the cold because they can't afford to heat their homes, which is another crisis that the government aren't handling properly. I hear what you're saying. But no, so you can't just skirt process, over. 40,000 people didn't die from climate crisis in this country this year. That is not true. That across is Europe. not true. And across Dale. the world, it is. Across, across the world. Europe. And across the world, across it's Across the world, no, no, 40,000 people. It's that's nothing. Of... It used to be millions. No, no. Right, we're going to have to leave that. Let's move world. aside from I'm that. I'm not but finishing. It... Across the world, it's hundreds of thousands, not 40,000. The, the numbers are out there. If you listen to what's being said at COP27, this mm. is a real crisis. Countries are being inundated with water. Whole countries are being unlivable. You know, we're, we're going to create millions of refugees from the climate crisis. This is a real problem. And yes, we don't lack awareness. I, I can no, hear okay. your argument. So what who are these people action. to make demands? We lack action. We lack action. Yes, we? We want, yes I want people. action on lots of things, but I don't I don't yeah. climb up a gantry on the M25 and stop people going to their father's funeral. When you say this is this is about this is about young people, entitled young often young people, some old as well, who clearly no one's ever said no to. Just because you want something in a democracy doesn't mean you get to force it on other people. You have to persuade and campaign. That's how we do things in a civilized twenty first century democracy. But I don't think that's a fair characterization of the people behind this protest. They use the word demand. Of, 
No, I'm talking about uh, you call them young, young entitled people or people who have never been said no to. I don't think that's the correct Isn't characterization it? of the people behind this What is the correct characterization? Protest. Absolutely not. They're from, they're from all walks of life and, oh, and all ages, actually. They are. Yeah, oh, they so. are. Why, why does he, regardless of their background, why does he give them the right to demand action? Because the world is in peril, right? And the things that are happening to the world, from the big oil and gas companies and the big food companies, they are driving destruction. The sixth great mass extinction of wildlife in, in our world and a climate crisis that will make the planet unlivable. And all of this is. Can I? Can I just say? Can I just say? I, I get what told. I get. I get told off all the time about this. There is nothing. There is nothing in the IPCC reports that says the planet is going to become unlivable. This is just this is just complete hyperbole. Those those reports do not the scientific reports do not say anything of the sort. The predictions from the actual scientists, with the actual documents and reports. You're supposed to be an expert on this. Is something you feel very strongly. You're, you're in a company that specialises in renewable energy. Um, you know, you green energy. You should know more about this than me. Um, that's simply not true. So this idea that this is this sort of absolute crisis right now, and if we don't act now, the whole planet's going to die. That is not a. That is that is simply made up. I mean, I'm not making up climate change before Ofcom get involved. I'm simply saying these these exaggerated claims are untrue. OK, so everything that's happening at COP27 is made up. It's a fantasy. Not everything. A, a lot of the things that are said by political activists and politicians at COP27, yes, they are made up. They're not based on the scientific reports they claim that they are based on. That's amazing. That's a great conspiracy theory, though. It's, it's not a conspiracy theory. It's You can read the IPCC reports yourself. I'm guessing you haven't, because you're misquoting them. I read them. plenty. I am not. I read plenty. Look, we've experienced 1.1 degree of global climate uh, temperature rise, right? We since 1880. Last, last year. Since no, 1880. No, uh, well, so, yeah, since the start of the Industrial Revolution, we've experienced 1.1 degree, right? It was floods, wildfires, droughts, hundreds of thousands of deaths globally. No, no, no. no deaths, we're on deaths, course. We're deaths, on from, course. deaths from climate disasters have no, gone down by 95% in the last 100 years. No, no, no. No, they and have. That's an official stat. Degrees. This is just We're no point. Dale, we'll have to leave it there. Dale, we'll have to leave it there.